we want to understand the notion of a limit. So let's start by looking at a picture. So you walk into the room, you see this line drawn on the board. The first thing you ask yourself is, why don't we fill this point in? Okay, so you take the Y value and then you're done. Intuitively, you've explained everything you need to know about a limit. Of course, that's not good enough mathematically. We need to pin this down with the numbers. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so I wanna put a function with my graph. It looks like a line, but we're gonna go with the function f of x equal to x squared minus one over x minus one. If I factor the top in x minus one, x plus one, then we'll be able to cancel out the x minus ones, and then this will collapse to x plus one. And then note, since I'm not allowed to divide by zero, I'm gonna throw away the point x equal to one. So that's why there's a hole above one. So what's this notion of a limit? So this will be the limit at x equal to one. So that's gonna be what we just talked about intuitively. We're trying to find on the graph the best fitting point at x equals one. So if we look, that's just gonna mean fill the hole in there, that covers things up nicely, that's the best fit. Then we wanna know what's the y value. Okay, another way to think of this, this is saying I don't know how to define y at this point here, that's why the open hole is there. You tell me what's the best way to define f of x at this point, so we want to know what is f of 1, and the only information we have would be the nearby points. So that would be picking off the y values to tell me what I should stick in for the y value here. Okay, so let's look at that numerically. So for instance, suppose we're looking at our x is going to be equal to 1, our limit we know is going to be equal to 2 because that's going to be the best fitting point, but let's just see how that washes out when we stick in points nearby. So for x, we're gonna go into one. So I'll take points 1.1, I get closer, I go to 1.01, go a little bit closer, I go 1.001. Okay, the y's, we're gonna get 2.1, get a little bit closer, 2.01, get a little bit closer, 2.001. So these y values are coming into two as we get to x going into one from the right. On the other side, we get closer to one. I could start with 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. We're getting closer and closer to one as we come in from the left. And then we notice our numbers for y are also getting closer to two. 1.9, get a little bit better with 1.99, get even better with 1.999. So we're going to two as we come in from the left. So, two is just dying to be the value of f of one here. So that's the idea of a limit. It's what does your function want to be? What should it be at one? Take a look at notation. The way we write this down is gonna be the limit as x goes to one, x squared minus one over x minus one is equal to two. Each piece of this, this x going to one, we only care about the x that are very close to one, we're gonna have our function in here, and then what comes out is gonna be a y value. So this is gonna be the y value of our best fitting point. In this case, it was one comma two, so I pulled the two off and put it in there. In general, same idea. We're gonna have our function f of x. Now, f of x may actually be defined at your point. Say it's up here. The limit ignores that. The limit's just gonna say, if you happen to be defined at x zero, erase it, now go to work, where's your best fitting point? If that point happens to be x zero L, then we're gonna define our limit to be L. And then we write that as limit x going to x zero of f of x equals L. So the question is, is there gonna be a better way to get limits without actually having to sit down and compute a whole bunch of points on your function near the point you wanna take the limit at? Well. Here's the general rule. For most functions, you can take your x zero, put it into your function. If something sensible comes out, that's gonna be your limit. So here's an example. I'm gonna take the limit as x goes to three, x squared plus one. So the rule's just gonna be, I take my three. Does putting three into this function make sense? Well, I'm gonna get three squared, which is nine plus one. 
10 comes out. So I'll call 10 the limit. We'll make this a little bit more concrete later on. Now, note what's happening with the picture though. If I take points that are very close to three, I apply F to them, and then we see where the Y value goes. So that's all we're doing when we apply F, taking X and sending it to F of X. You notice the points that come out are gonna be very close to this 10. So that's the idea of what a limit means. It means if I take any points that are gonna be very close to three starting out, when I hit them with F, then those values are gonna be very close to my 10. So things that start out close to your point wind up staying close to your limit on the other side. Okay, this trick is gonna work 90% of the time. For the rest of the time, what's gonna happen, you're gonna get something like zero over zero. That's what I mean by something that's not sensible. And then we're gonna to have to do more work. So for example, let's take a look at our first example. Limit as x goes to one of x squared minus one over x minus one. I put one into here and I'm gonna want it with one minus one over one minus one, which gives me zero over zero. So zero over zero is the signal you need to do more work. Well, note that the top factors into x plus one, x minus one. So the x minus ones will cancel to give me x plus one. And now I can stick the point in, put a one in there, and that's gonna give me two. Even though the function's not defined at one originally, because we can't divide by zero, that's gonna be fine when we're taking the function inside the limit. The limit does not actually care if you're defined at your function or not. So this business of collapsing this to there, no problem. So I put the one in, answer is two. Let's try another. Go limit x going to two, x squared minus six x plus eight, x squared minus five x plus six. So we put our two in there. We're gonna notice we're gonna get a zero over zero again. So I need to do more work. So fortunately, the top and the bottom are both gonna factor and we see we have x minus two times x minus four, x minus two, x minus three. Now you may be worried. Notice we have the x minus twos canceling. The x minus three doesn't go anywhere. Not a problem because if I stick two in there, zero is not gonna come out. What's gonna come out is minus one. And when we put our two into the top, we get a minus two. So the answer coming out here, perfectly sensible. We wind up getting two for the limit of this. Now, suppose you're in an exam situation, the limit they've handed you is complicated. What do you do? Well, you're gonna to wanna to take your x zero, you could take any point very close to your x zero, and then if you just stick that into the function, that'll give you a number that's very close to your limit, if the limit exists. So, when is this good? Well, if you have a multiple choice exam, it's great. For instance, an actuarial exam, if you're given just finitely many choices, you don't have to actually compute anything. Stick your number into your function, number meaning really close to the limit number, see what comes out. Hopefully it makes something sensible compared to your possibilities. Okay, for here, what do I mean by this? All right, well, here I'm looking at, we want x going to two. So I wanna take a number really close to two. Well, if I take 2.01 say, I won't be dividing by zero when I stick that in. If I crunch this out with my calculator, what we're gonna get is 2.01 and then that zero one's gonna repeat. And you note that number's really close to two. So I know that my limit here is probably correct. Try it again on the top one. Here, I'm gonna start with a number that's very close to one. So we'll go with 1.01. Just stick that in the top and bottom and then We'll crunch that down using a calculator. I get 2.01. This number is very close to two, so I know I've probably done it right. 